Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, is a term coined by Gartner that combines multiple network and security technologies into a single offering. The goal is to offer secure network services anywhere the user connects in from. And as we think about how distributed our workloads and users are, we find ourselves having to deal with multiple technologies that don't necessarily work together. This means multiple security policies and inefficient designs that are costly and don't scale. With the increase of work from home users, there's a bigger demand than ever for secure direct access to the cloud without having the central bottleneck and latency of the traditional VPN. SASE attempts to solve this problem by combining security as a service with network as a service. Garner has laid out three levels to accomplish SASE, including core, recommended, and optional. SASE core levels include SD-WAN, Secure Web Gateway, Firewall as a Service, CASB, and Zero Trust Network Access. The SASE recommended level includes sandboxing, browser isolation, WAF, network access control, next-gen antivirus or EDR, and SASE optional levels include wireless LAN and VPN for customers that still need those services. In this video, we'll discuss how these technologies come together and how vendors are working with each other to bring you a SASE package. Before we go further, please take a moment to hit like on the video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more cybersecurity videos. Before we dive into how SASE works, we need to understand the problem it's trying to solve. A recent report by Gartner found that 74% of CFOs intend to shift more employees to work from home, even after this pandemic has subsided. The average employee in a small organization uses about eight SaaS applications as part of their business workflow. Yet they also need access to internal resources like a soft phone, file share, and other services. The traditional approach was to have users VPN into a central location where policy and inspection can be applied. This creates higher latency for the user, more expensive circuits for the organization, and bigger inspection devices to handle the traffic. Secure Web Gateway and Firewall as a service vendors like Zscaler took care of this problem by distributing the inspection engines to regional pop locations and partnering with SaaS vendors to apply security right in the cloud environment itself. But what about if the user needs to connect back into the corporate network? How can I leverage the advantages of SD-WAN while still having a single security policies when my users go out back to their homes? SASE is designed with the end user in mind, and it starts with the idea of zero trust network access. Zero trust network access means that we don't care where the user is connecting in from as long as the user can verify their identification and the device that they're using to connect. In a true zero trust network, a trusted user with the appropriate privilege can only connect to the specific resources they're trying to access and nothing else. While there's no specific technology that must be used for zero trust, STP or software defined perimeter is quickly becoming the favorite. With SDP, an application request sets up a TLS tunnel on a per application basis. An SDP controller sets up and tears down these one-to-one -one tunnels and uses an SDP gateway to control access as enforcement points. For more information, check out my previous video titled Accomplishing Zero Trust Security Using SDP. And since SASE is all about providing network and security services wherever the user is located, the endpoint client is a vehicle to get our data where it needs to go. The client provides zero trust network access along with the connectivity to the various points. This means when a user needs access to a SaaS application like Office 365 from their home, the client recognizes their user's off net and routes them to the nearest inspection point for security, which then hands off to the application. The same logic applies when the user needs to access an internal resources hosted on a private network. They're routed to the nearest inspection point, which then sends them back to the private network. Security services like firewalling, antivirus, web filtering, and IPS are all happening in the cloud by the Secure Web Gateway provider. Depending on the vendor, Secure Web Gateway provider is also acting like an SDP gateway that allows connections to and from the various resources. In contrast to a traditional VPN network where users are connecting to one central location with big security devices doing the inspection, with SASE, those inspection devices are distributed across various regions, which means savings on the circuit size and the security device that would have been in a traditional hub and spoke network. Most of what we're talking about thus far is not new to you if you're familiar with Zscaler or other cloud web gateways. But what about when the remote user connects back into the office? Does it still make sense for the user to continue to route all their traffic to the cloud? Or should I leverage SD-WAN to make the best decision? This is where SASE really starts to make sense conceptually by merging the advantages of SD-WAN and Secure Web Gateway to provide a single consolidated solution. SD-WAN plays a pivotal role in the SASE framework by service chaining security inspection off to the Secure Web Gateway when inspection is required. 
Now, when a remote user connects into the office, I still authenticate them with zero trust network access, but I can let my SD-WAN appliance make the best steering decision on how to get to its resources. By still using SD-WAN, that means that my VoIP calls can still be protected with things like forward error correction and packet duplication. I can also do QoS and prioritizing of traffic, latency optimization, caching, and all of the other SD-WAN features that we all know and love and have tremendous benefit from. What we're seeing now in the SASE market is more and more SD-WAN vendors partner with secure web gateway vendors like Zscaler to do service chaining. In a previous video titled Secure SD-WAN, we detail why local security inspection is always a better choice if you have the ability. Needless to say, if your SD-WAN vendor doesn't have any local security inspection, service chaining to a secure web gateway is always an option. That being said, your goal should be to leverage a solution where you only have to make a policy change once and that policy change should be consistent no matter where the user is connecting in from. A good SASE solution should have the ability to have different off-net and on-network policies. When users get behind your corporate network, SD-WAN should be making the steering decisions. When they pack up and go home for the night, the client should connect to the nearest POP location and still leverage those same policies and security inspections without there being any gap. The last item in the SASE core framework is Cloud Access Security Broker, or CASB. According to a report by ESG, CISOs reported that SASE is a top security concern in the cloud. And with nearly every modern enterprise using some form of SaaS application for business workflows, CASB is becoming as important to your security posture as firewall is to your network. In the context of SASE, Cloud Access Security Broker should be integrated into a single solution. That means visibility into your SaaS applications wherever it's being used, centralizing your security policies, enforcing who has access to your cloud applications, and even quarantining users if it's necessary when suspicious behavior is detected. This involves having a SASE solution that integrates CASB into the management plane and having the same policy whether your users are on net or off net. To summarize, it all starts with zero trust network access. This is the authentication and authorization mechanism that allows a user to a resource no matter where they're connecting in from. If they're off network, their client connects them to the nearest POP location where security services inspect and route them accordingly. If they're behind the corporate network, SD-WAN steers them where they need to go and offload security inspection when necessary. So that wraps up this video and I hope you found it informative. As always, please comment, hit like, subscribe to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO Perspective and visit us at thecisoperspective.com.